Hello and welcome to our first online filling station. I'm John. Usually you see my back when I put the words on the screen. These are strange times for every one of us, aren't they? Being shut in is hard and lonely and patience wears thin. But even locked down, we can and should count our blessings. Living where we do, we're so much better off than many, aren't we? And wherever we are, Jesus is near. Nevertheless, it is sad we can't join one another for worship and fellowship. But we can play this video whenever we choose and as many times as we want, and we can do it locked down. Inevitably, the format's a bit different. We'll sing to our Lord with testimonies from Mark and Mary. Annie will lead us in prayer. And then we have Heli Brunt from the Filling Station team to speak to us. At the end, there'll be a final song before Hillary closes. All of us involved hope you find our time together enjoyable and a blessing. Thank you. Yes, let's pray. Can I just ask you to, to join in, not to just watch? Um, maybe, maybe stand or kneel or hold your hands out. But to, but to join in, I know it's just outward stuff, but, you know, it's the, it, yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's pray, let's pray. Father God, we're here this evening to worship you. We long to meet with you. We love your presence, Lord. Thank you, thank you for your love, your loving mercy and grace that, that covers us, that encompasses everything about us. And so, Lord, we, we dare to say, come, Holy Spirit, come and fill us, fill our hearts, fill our lives, fill our homes. Help us to worship you. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We begin our worship with uh, Brian Dawson's wonderful song, Faithful One. And the words speak to me in the chorus of this. You are my rock. You are my foundation. And after this song... Uh, Mark will bring a short testimony to us uh, and then we'll have another song after that. So uh, hang around, sing along with the words.
Hello, I'm Mark and I'm going to share a testimony of God's faithfulness when dealing with fear. Fear has been defined as false events appearing real. Um, the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear, which suggests that where we have fear, we don't have God's perfect love. There's one of three ways we can deal with fear. We can avoid the situation, we can deal with it through gritted teeth, or we can have God's presence in it to help us walk through the situation. One of the things I've been fearful about has been heights. When I was younger, I was up a ladder, only about 10 feet in height, and the ladder slipped on some grease and I fell to the ground. And with time, I've become more and more nervous about heights, to the point that walking over a pedestrian bridge with grids in it so you can see through it, or balcony with a glass front, those situations, coastal works, will, could be quite scary. At home, we've got a climbing plant that climbs a downpipe and gets up to height and then begins to fill the guttering and from time to time we have to get in and prune it clear. Last time we did this, I was at the bottom of the ladder, and you've got to get to about 25, 30 feet, and I was very pleased that somebody else climbed it. This time it was me doing the climbing. Now I'd spent the morning worshipping the Lord and listening to some online worship, it had been really beautiful. As I began to take those first tentative steps, I was remembering the songs I'd been singing and I felt peaceful. And I got further and further up the ladder and didn't feel nervous. Did all I needed to do, came back down. I even went up the other side of the downpipe and knew God had been with me. And then at the weekend, I was on the veranda roof, which is clear, and didn't feel nervous. And I know that God has been with me in this and has given me his peace to deal with that fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Our next song, you may not know all of it, but you'll know the words. Um, but uh, it's from Paul Belosh. Um, and a mighty fortress is our God, a tower of strength, never failing. And some of the words are, he won't abandon us. He won't deceive us. He won't desert us. He will never leave. The faith, The faithful one, his love will remain. A mighty fortress. A mighty fortress. 
coronavirus, what's it all about? What's going on? What's God doing? I think one of the things that God has dropped into my mind in the last month or so is he's taken me to, to think about people like John on Patmos, Daniel, hoiked off to Babylon in the prime of his life, Joseph, sold into slavery by his jealous brothers who didn't care tuppence where he ended up. And you look at what happened to Joseph, and years later, when they were reconciled, father and the other brothers and Joseph, and he said to them, you meant it for harm, but God used this for good. And what God, I think, is, shown, is showing me is that we are in ex exile. What we're going through in lockdown is a type of exile. Unlike the Bible people I've mentioned, they were taken away physically to somewhere else. Look at Paul, imprisoned, who wrote a whole chunk of our New Testament. Where exile happened in the old days, it was people being taken out of the normal situation, taken somewhere else. In a way, we've been taken out of the normal, and God is using this time, I'm sure, for each and every one of us. So communication, prayer, friendships, new friendships, digging deeper into all those relationships, particularly with God and with others, I think is what is coming out of this for me. And praying for those who are the decision makers, those who have responsibility, and those who find themselves completely in a place they never didn't expect. Let's keep praying for each other and upholding each other in prayer as we each deal with the extraordinary and the unusual. And thank you, Lord, for guiding us on the way. And we finish our worship uh, segment with uh, a, a, a golden oldie, if you like. Um, this is uh, Be Still and Know That I Am God. So let's join together and pray. Lord God, you are faithful, always faithful. And we trust you. We, you are our hope. And we look to you. Let's just speak out to God our worship, our praise, 
acknowledge who he is. We love you, Lord. We worship you. And we ask you, Lord, to show us who we need to pray for this evening, who we need to stand alongside, who we need to bring into your presence. Father, will you give us names? Will you show us faces? Maybe neighbours or family or friends or leaders, spiritual leaders, world leaders, or people we don't know, people who are in desperate need at this time around the world. Father, we bring these people to you. O oh, high King of heaven, have mercy on us all. Have mercy on these people we have brought to you. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of all those who are struggling at this time. in whatever way. May your kingdom come, your kingdom come here on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. We ask these things for your name's sake, for your glory, Lord. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hi there. I hope you're doing really well. Uh, I'm praying for you this evening. And um, uh, yeah, I'm bringing a message tonight from Psalm 46, which is an incredible psalm um, that really speaks of stability. And um, I'm just going to read it through first for us and then share a couple of thoughts and um, pray for us um, and invite God's spirit to do what he can do. Um, so yeah, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that it's sharper than a double-edged sword. And um, I thank you, Lord, that, um, yeah, that you speak through this word, that it's a powerful, uh, weaponized message into our lives. And so help us to hear exactly what your spirit wants to say um, as we hear these words from your truth, God. Amen. So Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is with her. She will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The almighty God is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, he shatters the spear, he burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And I love this concept of God 
as a rock. God as steadfast, eternal. And um, the reminder that kind of weaves throughout this psalm that said, that reminds us that this almighty God who we have um, as our father is also the God of Jacob. And so, you know, God has been working in history. He's reminding us really, this psalmist for us now, that God's been working in history and he's working again. And um, there's a little phrase I use when I'm reading scripture. I ask the Holy Spirit to highlight phrases for me. And I very much believe that as God said it for them, he's saying it again for us. And if he said it there in that context, he can say and reaffirm that word for us now. And if that's what God was doing then, it's something he could be doing now as well. So it's it's an amazing um, thought that we are attached into history where God has been working very well for thousands and thousands of years through his people and we're attached into his story and continue through scripture I remember people saying it's like we're we're Acts 29 we're Acts chapter 29 we're the next part of the acts of God through people on earth we're the body of Christ Um, and I don't know how you're doing with processing emotions and dealing with thoughts um, in these times and there's a lot of information and a lot of noise out there isn't there Um, lots of people brilliantly and beautifully have been finding their voices um, that perhaps didn't have them before but I found it a bit overwhelming in the first few weeks everyone was just processing their thoughts on politics on faith, on uh, what they felt God was saying. And it it was coming into my inbox. It was spamming my Facebook. And I I started to feel a bit overwhelmed. And it felt just a lot of noise. Um, And it didn't have a very good effect on me. It drove me into kind of researching things, getting a bit suspicious, uh, overly analysing um, in my mind in, in perhaps an uncomfortable and unhelpful way. And I was reminded that Um, this kind of noisy needing to know is not particularly godly. Um, The very, you know, in the book of beginnings in Genesis, we read this, this creation story that talks about Adam, the Adam and Eve and how the thing that brought them down was their quest for knowledge from this tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we like to know, don't we, um, as humanity we want to know and I think sometimes people say you know knowledge brings us power it brings us security Um, but actually I think um, there's a very humbling thing that's happening that we don't know there are lots of experts who know a lot more than us at the moment and we we don't we know bits and we can prophesy bits and God knows though God knows everything and he chooses to to give us glimpses of some of it and so the thing that he he is kind of asking of us, this psalmist, is to be still and to know, but not gain knowledge, not clamour, not be noisy, not to just get more information, um, but actually to know God. Be still and know that I am God. And I wonder how you're doing on that today. I wonder whether that's something in your heart you feel um, quiet and in your spirit or in your mind sometimes when my mind is noisy um, I find it really helpful to just journal and write out three pages where I'm literally it's not even particularly prayerful but I'm just writing out what my brain is chattering because then when I see people next they don't get my vomiting my verbal processing I've actually got cleared it out And it's like I imagine I'm giving it to the Lord just to clear my head. But we can be still in our souls and be still in our spirits and just know that God is exactly who he says he is and he remains who he says he is uh, from scripture. There's a really lovely version um, of Psalm 108 in the Passion Translation and a friend of mine was sharing it with our church uh, only the other day and um, in Psalm 108 verse 1 it says my heart O God 
is quiet and confident, all because of you, all because of God. Our hearts can be quiet and confident. And I think that's that almost sums up where Psalm 46 wants us to get to, um, that we can look back in history and remember what God has done. And I'm sure as we look back in our own lives and the lives of others, we can track the history, the beautiful workmanship of God in our lives and answers to prayer. And um, it doesn't gloss over some of the catastrophes, does it? You know, it talks about having to defeat um, shields with his fire. Um, But what's amazing about that um, Psalm 108 is it says that my heart, O God, is quiet and confident all because of you. So this quietened down heart, this inner peace that we get from the Lord, then it says, Now I can sing my song with passionate praises. Awake, my soul. And so we find in God a safe place, a refuge, a solidity. He is our help in times of trouble. He is the commander, the mighty God of angel armies. And he is the God of Jacob, not just us. He goes back and works through history over time and he fights for us and so we can surrender our anxieties to him we can give him our thoughts he perceives them from afar and he has got thoughts towards us as well hasn't he and he is over all the nations and we can just be still and calm and quietened in his presence the 24 7 team have got a prayer app, I don't know if you've seen it, called Lectio 365. And one of the kind of opening lines for each day is um, a prayer where they say, as I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly, and to recenter my scattered senses upon the presence of God. And then the prayer of approach uses Um, Psalm 46 saying eternal friend you're my ever-present help in times of trouble speak with me now as I spend time with you and may your presence be peace to me your promise fuel faith in me and your purpose be fulfilled in me throughout the day to come and so we have this amazing um, authority in our words to speak to our own souls, as well as to bring things before God, to bring noisiness, anxiousness to God and just find ourselves just knowing who he is afresh, where we can just say to ourselves, quiet now, be still, soul, just be calm and be at peace and know who God is, know God afresh, not just what he can do, but actually God himself is present with us. So I'd love to pray for us today um, that God's spirit um, touches us in a powerful way, that we re-encounter the Lord in this moment now, that we remember who he is and that we hear this command, quiet, be still. I am God and we hear him call that into the very core of our being. So I'm just going to pray for us now. And we're inviting the Holy Spirit to do a work of peace in us. Um, And he's right here with us. So Holy Spirit, we are inviting you to come closer. To still our anxious thoughts. We give you emotions that feel noisy inside of us. And we command our bodies, our minds, our will, our emotions, our our very souls to know you, to remember who you are, to hold fast to you, our ever-present help in times of trouble. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to seal your word And to bring a sense of steadiness into the core of our being right now, in Jesus' name. And we silence 
nagging thoughts and we still our feet to stand firmly on your rock right now. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you pour your power out, powerful God, come now, God. You may want to open up your hands as a physical sign that you're inviting this powerful, our powerful God in afresh. More of you, Lord. And speak to us, God. Speak your word of truth and reality. Thank you, Lord. Thank for you that your very presence is peace to us. And we may want to imagine anything in our hands that is shouting in our minds or anxious in our souls and just place it in our hands, imagining it maybe like an object to give it to God. And then Isaiah 61 talks about as we give our ashes, as we give our mourning, he gives us a beautiful headdress in exchange and the oil of gladness. And so maybe there'll be something physical we see God swap for what we pass to him. Just imagine yourself giving these, these anxious thoughts to the Lord and recentering our lives back on him again and just see now what what he's giving you back I really feel he's giving you peace he's giving you a sense of peace that goes beyond all understanding goes beyond anything we could know or find out and discover and Lord, we put our trust in you now author and perfecter of faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sending you lots of love and praying God's blessing on you and protection over you and that his spirit will really be speaking to you um, as you meet together and join. Bye. Well, we hope that during this very unusual filling station that you have received food to help you and sustain your journey onwards. Into tomorrow, exiles, together and apart. We look to a God who is always hope. There's always hope. We don't have to fear. We have our hope in Jesus. And we give thanks for the spiritual food we've, we've been fed with and we pray God bless us and keep us, make his face to shine upon us and give us peace and his joy this day and always. Amen. May the Lord bless